Hello, quarantinis. Welcome to another co video. See what I did there? COVID video, co video. <laughs> uh, today's episode is not hilarious, it's more helpful. Um, it's about the things that you can do if you get COVID 19. I'm no doctor, I'm just here to help because I have it. I've been told I'm a fairly positive kind of girl. That's certainly definitely true about COVID. Wow, crowd goes wild. <laughs> I um, carry the applause everywhere I go. Uh, my husband and I got sick at the beginning of July. We're still testing positive and it's almost August. If you or your loved ones are suffering right now, I send you all my love. Uh, we could still test positive six months later and there's uh, talk now that it could have some kind of uh, cardiac issues years down the track. I don't recommend you get it. We don't know when, how or who we got it from. My husband contracted it first and then he gave it to me, a point that really irritates him. So I like to say it quite a lot. <laughs> the likely culprit, he thinks, is probably a keypad at a grocery store, punching in the pin number and then not properly sanitising his hands afterwards. Wearing masks, social distancing, staying away from people and obsessively washing your hands and keeping your hygiene top-notch around the house is definitely making a difference. It just is. Okay, so this little episode is designed to share with you some of the experience about what we had to deal with. My hope is that there's just some tiny gem of good advice in here that you'll find useful. Because while we were sick, we were inundated with lots of texts and emails from kind people and people that we didn't even know asking, what's it like? What are the symptoms like? You know, how are you? What do we need? What can we drop off at the door? Um, dressed <laughs> like beekeepers. <laughs> Let's start with the symptoms. Symptoms may change and often include high fever, chills, cold sweats, headache, migraines, uh, body aches, joint pain, cough, usually dry, extreme loss of taste, loss of smell, terrible fatigue, which is still hanging around for us now, awful chest pain, extreme pain behind the eyes, burning electric sensations on the skin seem to happen toward the end. Um, we got all of these symptoms and we would consider that we got a low dose. So you can imagine what these people are dealing with. It's worth noting that not all the symptoms come at once. It's like a, a carousel of symptoms that are new every few days. Sometimes a symptom will go away. Uh, only to return a couple of days later, accompanied by an entirely new set of symptoms you didn't even have before. So at least it's not boring. It certainly keeps you on your toes. I would recommend the first sign of any one of these symptoms. I would say quarantine, lock yourself away and call everybody you've seen in the last 14 days and let them know that you might have COVID. It's awkward for sure to make that phone call and hopefully uh, you're wrong and it is just a little summer sniffle. But if it stops that person from visiting their grandma or their friend with underlying conditions that later that afternoon and passing on COVID-19 to them, then your thoughtful caution will have been 100% worth it. We also uh, took on board some scientific aids as well. This is called a pulse ox or a pulse oximeter. A doctor friend of mine who works at the ER at Cedar sinai Hospital and uh, she specializes in COVID-19 highly recommended that I get one of these. Uh, as I said, pulse ox or pulse oximeter. Uh, it measures the levels of oxygen in your blood. Amazon sells dozens of options for around 20 bucks. Google agreed with what the doctor said. Uh, if you stay around 95 or higher, I'm 97, 98, that's good. Uh, but if you start to fall during your illness to 90 or below for any extended, even a few hours period of time, that is your cue to get yourself to the ER immediately. Uh, we found we hovered around 91, 92 for a good few days. So uh, this little device was very reassuring to have on hand. Thermometer. If you don't have one of these in your cabinet, what did your mother teach you? Uh, go out and get one immediately. Get one today. I just have these on hand in case everything goes pear-shaped. We were consistently reaching temperatures as high as 103.6. Temperatures of 104 degrees uh, can start to cause brain damage. Um, <laughs> great. That's good to know, isn't it? 
our temps uh, skyrocketed even without us sensing it, we found. And so we needed to be checking our temperature um, frequently so we could know when it's time to get the cold packs, the ice packs out of the freezer and um, put them onto our heads, uh, roll them up in a towel and put them on the back of the neck is really, really nice. Lovely way to sleep too. Um, or also under the armpit. Yeah, of course, it doesn't take a doctor to say that if your temperatures are really high for that long, again, get yourself to the ER. For the fever, you'll definitely need to have a lot of acetaminophen or uh, Tylenol on hand, uh, as well as maybe some ibuprofen, which is like Advil or Aleve. Now, at the start of the virus, the French doctors were saying that it's not okay to take ibuprofen. They now say that it's fine. They say that whichever takes care or relieves your symptoms the best. Uh, do keep in mind, though, that they say that taking too much ibuprofen causes kidney damage and eat away at the wall of your stomach, uh, and too much acetaminophen can cause liver damage. But while acetaminophen can reduce fever, it cannot reduce inflammation like ibuprofen can. So, you know, whatever works for you and just mix it up so there's not too much stress on any one organ. Food. You will find that you have zero appetite. And if you do eat, it all just tastes like textured air anyway. So if you can bring yourself to eat, good for you. Um, there's a chocolate mouse and a paper hat waiting for you. Uh, two mouthfuls, I find, and you're full. So I would highly recommend batching and freezing some single serving sizes of bone broth or veggie noodle soup. Uh, to have on hand something that's full of nutrients and easily accessible. We found ordering delivery every day gets really, really expensive. And I wish someone had told me that before we got it. Green juices. Daily green juices, I think, helped us both uh, immensely. We wazzed one up every morning and we just stuffed every supplement and good and nutritious thing into it that we could. Green leafy vegetables, spinach, kale, of course, celery, beets, lots of fresh ginger, garlic cloves, doesn't taste great, but really good for you. Oregano oil also tastes awful, but really good for the respiratory system. Uh, golden seal, great for lack of appetite. And uh, licorice, licorice is really good for uh, a cough and viral infections, but it can cause a heart arrhythmia. So maybe just ask a doctor or a naturopath what your dosage might be before you run into any troubles. And um, I did not recommend that you take a lot of licorice. <laughs> be careful with licorice. Who knew? And we use that juice to wash down all of our vitamins. So naturopath and friend of ours, Dr. John Kalman, who I interviewed on my Extraordinaires podcast, shared a whole slew of magical vitamins that are perfect for immunity from COVID, as well as shortening the time spent suffering from it, if you get it. I would recommend maybe speaking to your naturopath to purchase the therapeutic level doses of these and other vitamins so you have them on hand and they're just better than the over-the-counter versions. So this is what we were having. We're having zinc, uh, liquid zinc, which inhibits viral replication. We're having vitamin D3, a must. Vitamin D3 is great for cellular barrier support. Vitamin A for host defense support. Vitamin C and lots of it. Humans do not produce their own vitamin C. N-acetyl-L-cysteine or NAC, I believe, is an excellent antioxidant that reduces fever. Selenium helps prevent lung damage. Cordyceps mushrooms, I love cordyceps mushrooms for whatever ails you. It's an adaptogen and it's great for the lungs. And also maybe get some um, astragalus or astragalus, wherever you come from, however you say it. Echinacea and elderberry are also really good during this time. Other than that, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. In the YouTube comments of um, this episode on the Teresa Livingston YouTube channel, I will list all the vitamins and the mushrooms and the proper dosage information if you want to take a look, as well as other great advice by the good Dr. John Kalman. And uh, we'll also include a link there to purchase some uh, therapeutic vitamins and supplements at a specially offered discount if you want it. It's yours. Okay, let's move on to prevention. Prevention is the best cure. Uh, a few ideas for how to keep the virus at bay. I would say always take your shoes off at the door. Maybe spray them with some Lysol. Do not track the bacteria into your house. Since we can't find Lysol or disinfecting wipes anywhere, 
on any shelf for love nor money. Uh, we've got a UV sanitizing bulb. Then be careful when you shop for them. Uh, ours has quite a lot of um, ozone, so we have to like keep it in a, a separate room. So maybe I'd recommend researching and getting like a uh, antimicrobial UV sanitizing wand. And then you can just wave it over your shoes that you've been wearing that day, your masks, phone, gloves maybe, anything that you've touched and you want to sanitize them, it kills the virus. It's worth the investment, I think, about 50 bucks pretty much at first glance on Amazon, which is how my friend says it because she's British. Amazon, and I like it. I think it's cute, so I've kept it. The germ key I like, uh, it's a tool that you can use to stop touching common surfaces. Uh, you can use it to type in your PIN number, which is, I think, again, how my husband uh, got corona and passed it on to me. Uh, you can even use the hook on the germ key to open doors. Uh, it's made of antimicrobial brass, and I just uh, clip it onto my keychain. I found one at Ralph's for like 12 bucks, and um, they're made in America. Uh, you can also make your own hand sanitizer and disinfectant spray. Uh, CDC recommends at least 60% alcohol in any of the mixtures that you make. You can go up to 75%. Uh, what you'll need is three parts isopropyl alcohol to one part aloe vera gel. I would then add five or six drops of like a, a lavender oil, some kind of essential oil to make it smell nice. You can get all these things online too. You'll need to moisturize your hands quite a bit uh, after using that a lot. It gets really drying. So if you want to make a spray version, you'll take 12 fluid ounces of isopropyl alcohol. You'll mix it with two teaspoons of glycerol or glycerin. Mix in one tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide and then three fluid ounces of distilled water. If you don't have distilled water, you can bring water to the boil and then cool it down. It's the same thing. And then, of course, add your essential oils if you like. I reckon you like. It's much better that way. Remember, at least three quarters of your final mixture has to be alcohol. You can spray this solution onto a paper towel, which I like, and then just use it like a disinfectant wipe. That's all we did, really, to recover from COVID, going from one horizontal position to the next horizontal position for days and days and days and days on end. Rest. Just take the time to rest and binge everything that Netflix and Prime have to offer. Drink tons of water. I have cold packs on hand. Have tons of vitamins on hand, your mushrooms, and just be kind to yourself. Ten days after your first symptoms show the CDC, say that you're no longer contagious. I would say stay in for a little bit longer. You know your own body. I'm hoping there's, as I said, a little seed of helpful info in here to help you be better prepared for the dreaded moment you might come down with this horrible thing. And if you do, here's a few of these ideas that will make you feel better, quicker. Thank you for watching. Yes, that's you. Love, health, happiness, and hope to all of my human family. Quarantinis out.